Hi, Danny. Hi. Welcome to PLT Behind Closed Doors. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I am so excited to meet you. You recently starred in our campaign for International Women's Day. What a campaign that was. So I've been really excited to get you here. Can you tell me a little bit about how that campaign was for you? It was an amazing experience. The girls were so sweet. Like we all clicked and became friends immediately. Um, the team, like PLT's team, it, they made it like such a fun experience for us. Oh, and so like, glad. I felt so comfortable like during the shoot and it was just really amazing. That's something I noticed because on all of the pictures, you all looked like you'd known each other forever. Like yeah. you were like the best of friends. Did you know any of the girls prior? No, I didn't. And no. that's the thing, like I felt like I've known them for years. Like, I don't know, we just clicked. Well, it definitely showed through on the pictures. It was a beautiful campaign. You've been modeling for about a year. How did it all actually begin for you? Um, well, last year, like around this time, I attended a cast an open casting for a swimsuit company. And I don't know, I don't know what made me do it. I think at that point, I wanted to like, just try something that I've never done before. And it just sounded fun to me. So I went, it was a two day casting and like hundreds of women went. Wow. And they, they looked like models, like they looked experienced, you know? So my mom and I went to the casting and um, she let me know, like, she was just being honest with me. She's like, you're you may not get this, you know, because these girls, they looked like models and they were only picking nine women for the campaign. So I felt like my chances of getting it were kind of slim, but it's okay. Like I didn't expect anything from it, but I ended up getting called by them and that I, I got it. So that was my first like modeling. Oh my God. So I'm, my face looks like shocked because I'm only shocked because it was kind of like not on purpose. You weren't like, okay, so I want to be a model. This yeah, is what I'm going to do. I you wasn't went like, off. This is my dream. I'm going to go to all these castings. No, like it was just something I saw on Instagram. I'm like, oh, this looks fun, and I just decided to go for oh it. Oh my god, how incredible! So, <laughs> as a child, had you ever thought about like you know you wanting to be a model? Honestly, I feel like kind of like everyone does because I also yeah. wanted to be a singer and a dance and like you know yeah. it's just like like every, every girl does and a princess like <laughs> <laughs> yeah I wanted to do all these thing, things and like I did want to model at some point and. Um, I was really into like the body positive movement yeah. on Instagram. Like that's for where sure. it started for me at least. And I followed all of these like plus models. Uh -huh. and I just, I loved the way they looked. I thought they were beautiful. So I just, I just fall into it. And who would you say inspires you the most? Ashley Graham. <laughs> she's a, she's <laughs> a good one, isn't so, she? I was telling you like before this, I love her so much. She's an amazing person and a huge inspiration for me. Why do you find her so inspirational in particular? Um... Well, I saw her um, her Sports Illustrated uh -huh. cover. That was like huge for me because like you usually see women like of different sizes for them usually, but yeah. she like stood out immediately. And ever since then, I was just like, I love her. <laughs> yeah. And so you've been modeling for now a year. How has the journey been for you? It's been a roller coaster, but like in a good way. I love roller coasters. So yeah, it's been, me too. It's been great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think just a memorable experience was with PLT. I've done, I haven't done many jobs because I'm still like a new model, yeah. but PLT was probably by far like the best one so far. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah. That's so <laughs> lovely. And you said that you signed with your model agency, was it last September? In September, yeah. And how did that come about? Did they just spot you? Well, my agency's um, owner, like the person who created it, yeah. she also has like a company called Healthy is the New Skinny. Okay. So they they hold like events, like workout group workout events that are really fun. And I wanted to go to one. So I went to it and I had never done like a group workout before. So I was really nervous. And I met her and I loved her. Katie, she's yeah. amazing. Um, I've been following her on Instagram for years. So seeing her was oh, like wow. a shocker. And yeah. I started talking to like her team and um, we like all clicked. And then I ended up going to um, lunch with them after the event. And I was in the car with my agent. Like, she was going to become my agent. No. I didn't even know she was an agent. And she was like, her name's Nikki, by the way. And she's oh like, what's, she's like, what's your story? Like, <laughs> like, tell me about yourself. Yeah. So I just started, like, pouring my heart out to her. Like, I had no clue she was an agent. And then um, I asked her, oh, so what do you do with, like, um, with natural? Uh -huh. And she's like, oh, I just help the girls book their jobs. And I'm like. Like, I didn't know that meant. Now yeah. I'm like, that's an agent. But yeah. at the time, I was like, oh, that's really cool. Not <laughs> like, really paying attention yeah, to it at all. I had no wow. idea. And then a couple weeks later, she DMs me on Instagram and asks me to come in 
to the office to take some digitals and then I got signed. And then here you are. Yeah. How incredible. <laughs> it, was, it was so cool, yeah. You mentioned then that she asked you to tell her your story in the yeah. car. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me your story? Um, I've had alopecia since I was two and a half years old and alopecia is an autoimmune disease that mm -hmm. um, causes your hair, like your immune system thinks that you have like, your hair is like a sickness kind of. It thinks like right. you have a cold or a flu. So it's trying to fight it off. So it makes your hair fall off. So I didn't know that. Yeah, it's like really bizarre how yeah. it happens. But um, I've had it since I was mm -hmm. two. And um, it was really hard for me when mm. I first got it. Well, I mean, when I was so young when I got it, I didn't understand it. But what once it I got to school, it's like, that's when it hit me. Like, this is the real thing, you know. Um, like the kids are really mean to me. Um, they didn't understand, I mean, Kids are kids. Yeah. They didn't understand what I had, and I didn't even want to talk about it. And, um, you know, kids, when they see something that's different, they yeah. just react differently to it. And um, that lasted for years, and it did get really bad. Like, girls <laughs> were really mean to me. Um, they would pull off my hair, like, because I would wear wigs and stuff. And they would pull off my hair. They would pull off my hats it was just a really horrible so environment terrible. yeah and like I was so ashamed of my alopecia I think that made it worse the fact that I was so ashamed of it yeah and I I just didn't want to talk about it and they knew then they used that against me so um it it took years for me to accept it you know <laughs> and I actually watched a video recently of you where I think you said that it was around age 14 15 when you finally started to accept your alopecia and like what a moment, like I can hear, you know, yeah. that's a painful story for you. So what a moment that was, what was it that made you decide at that age? Okay, I'm gonna accept myself. Okay, so um, when I, so around that time, I was a freshman in high school mm -hmm. and I was getting better with my alopecia. Um, I was actually in a marching band and I, I met no like, way. yeah, and I met, I, all my, that. I met all my friends like in the band oh, and they actually like the girls that I became friends with, they're into like cosplay. <laughs> so they loved wigs already. So the fact that I had a wig, like we just bonded yeah. through that, you know, Amazing. and I became more comfortable talking about alopecia. And then after that year, that summer, my mom, decided to take me to a NAF conference, which yeah. NAF stands for National Alopecia Areata Foundation. And okay. they hold an annual con conference every year for people with alopecia. Wow. And my mom told me like, we're gonna go to this. It's in St. Louis, Missouri. And I was not looking forward to really? it at all. No, I did not want to go. And she forced me to go, which I'm really thankful that she did force me to go yeah. because I ended up meeting one of my best friends at that conference that year. And Amazing. when I met her, her name is Victoria, by the way. When I met her, she wasn't wearing her wig. She was just rocking her bald head. And she I thought she looked absolutely stunning. Yeah. And um, she encouraged me to take off my hair during that time. And I, I did not want to. I was like, I'm good. And I just kept my wig on for the conference. Yeah. But by the end of the conference, I wasn't wearing my hair anymore. And um, it was just. It was so crazy because I, I didn't think I would get to that point, but I wasn't wearing my wig, you know, in front of all these people. And that year I took my school photo without my wig. And it was just, it was an amazing like experience. That was what I'd actually, I, I'd read or I'd seen on a video on your Instagram about that school photo. Cause yeah. I can only imagine, you know, what it was like for you going through high school. Like that is a huge moment. Would you say that's like the pinnacle moment in yeah. your life for you? And ever since then, it's been like a domino effect. I've just, I don't, I, I've just accepted it since then. I think that's absolutely incredible. <laughs> it's such a brilliant story. So what do you think we need to do as a world, as a society, to be more understanding and aware of alopecia? Well, I think um, featuring people with alopecia like in the media, I feel like that's number one. Like representation is everything. Mm -hmm. And the more we see it, like the more accepting we'll be of it. Yeah. You know? But okay, so on that note as well, um, I know it must be difficult for anybody to come to be comfortable with the body. I mean, everybody, every girl, every guy in the world, it's hard to be confident in, mm. in so many different aspects. But for you, for yourself, what advice would you give to any girls, any young girls or boys going through, you know, what you've been through um, to be confident with their body and to say, look, this is me. Because I know right now you celebrate that and I think it's incredible. And as PLT, we think that's incredible. But yeah. what would you say, what advice could you offer? My advice would be, well, first to not put so much pressure on yourself yeah. because it took me years. They didn't, this didn't happen overnight, yeah. you know? Like it took me so many years to accept my alopecia. 
Um, what my advice would be is to reach out mm -hmm. to others with alopecia. Like the online community with alopecia is huge. Yeah. So you can meet friends th through there. Like I've met some really close friends of mine through Instagram. Yeah. Like who would have thought? And um, also the NAF conference helped me so much. Yeah. And I think everyone should at least go to one in their life if they have alopecia because they really do help you. Can you tell me a little bit more about what the NAF conference is? Um, the NAF conference is held every year in like a different city in the U.S. And pretty much it's like three days of hanging out with a bunch of bald people, <laughs> a bunch of people with alopecia. And um, it's really fun. Like the, for um, kids, they have a kids camp mm -hmm. and the kids get to hang out with each other, go on like a little field trip. Amazing. Do activities, group activities. The conference has workshops like to help you with applying makeup for alopecia because you know applying makeup for with alopecia is like really difficult wow. um how to like how to accept the alopecia they have workshops for that too and yeah, it's really great so is that something you've been going to like yearly yeah I go since? I've gone for like the last six years that's amazing yeah. it's so good that there's something there that is a support system to yourself yeah, it's amazing um I I would go as a camper for the kids camp and that's where I met my friend that I was telling you about but um now for the last three years mm -hmm. i've been going as a camp counselor yeah so that's <laughs> what i was just going to go into next yeah. okay so tell me a little bit about that that's so, incredible um, i don't know how i got into it i think one of the um, camp counselors had told me about it so i just decided to do it and it's been such a rewarding experience like especially this last year last summer yeah um it was the conference was held in scottsdale arizona Amazing. and i got assigned the teen group and at first like the first day of the conference i had four girls in my group and wow. it was like their first conference and by the end of the like kids camp I had 12 girls in my group <laughs> no way yeah I don't know I think they just liked my group I don't know we had the fun group <laughs> I love that yeah and I I really loved it because I got to talk to the girls about just like life you yeah. know like life as an alopecian and um I got to help them with like their makeup, like, yeah. <laughs> like eyebrow questions. Which every eyelashes. young girl loves to do. Yeah, and like especially with alopecia because like we don't have eyebrows or yeah. eyelashes. So it's yeah. like fun to be able to do that. And so I'm interested, the young girls that were in your group, did you sort of see yourself in any of those girls? Um, absolutely. Like I was in their shoes at some yeah. point. You know, when I went to my first conference, I felt the same way. I was really nervous, shy. I didn't even really want to talk to people. Yeah. And... I, I kept that in mind while being a camp counselor because I didn't I didn't want to put so much pressure on myself like oh I need to change their lives you know yeah of course but in the end I mean I feel like they changed my life you know like they were they're amazing I, I can't even explain it and you spoke before about um, social media and about all these girls that you sort of follow in the community that is kind of on social media on Instagram how do you think that's kind of affected you as well has that had any impact on your confidence, seeing other girls, you know, in your situation. Yeah, no, it absolutely did. Um, what's her name? Her name is Jenny, Jennifer, <laughs> on Instagram. She was, like, the first, like, alopecia wow. like, model type that I saw on Instagram. And yeah. she's really cool. And, like, wow. after seeing, like, her pictures, like, on Instagram, mm -hmm. like, her rocking it, it, it kind of encouraged me to, like, do the same. I think that's absolutely fantastic. I think... We need more of that, more um, embracing every single person, every single body yeah. in the world is definitely a powerful thing. So now that you've created this sort of platform for yourself, where do you see your life going? What does the future hold for you? Well, I'm just I'm just living in the moment right now. Um, I don't know where it's going to go. I mean, it's going well, so hopefully it continues that way. And what do you think you'd be doing today if you weren't mon modeling and mentoring? Well, I would be in school. I'm still in school right now, but that's probably, that that would be my main focus. Oh my God, I didn't know you were in school. Yeah. So you're juggling <laughs> modeling, being in school and just being a badass basically all around. <laughs> yeah, I guess wow. so. <laughs> you're so busy. That's incredible. What are you Thank studying? You. Um, I'm studying music and then I've dabbled into communication. So I'm how, doing that too now. <laughs> how exciting. Wow, you've got a lot going on. <laughs> yeah. Okay, big question. Tell me one thing that would shock us about you. Um, well, I play trumpet. <laughs> no way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. How long have you played the trumpet? You said you're in a band. Yeah. Um, I've been playing trumpet since fourth grade. <laughs> oh, my God. So you must be so really like, good. So, like, since I was, like, nine years old. <laughs> Do you ever think you'll share some of that on your Instagram? Because I've never seen that. 
<laughs> or is that something you like to keep private? Um, maybe one day, honestly, like, I don't know. I hope to see some of that, like, genuinely. Uh, just send me videos, <laughs> please, after this. <laughs> okay, now before we finish, I'd like to ask you a mantra to live by, whether that be a quote, a saying that kind of helps you day to day. Do you have one? Actually, there's this post on Instagram that, like, I saved it. I love it. It's, like, a really cool quote. Okay, okay. I'm excited. Okay. So it says, stop taking yourself out of opportunities because you don't feel like you are ready yet. It's time to jump. You are ready now. I've just got <laughs> shit. I love it so much. I love that. And that helps you day to day, do you feel? Yeah, I feel like that's how I've been kind of living my life. Like, even though I don't feel, like, let's say I don't feel too sure about something, I'm just yeah. going to go Jump for on it, it you know? and see yeah. what's there. <laughs> that's amazing. Before we finish, I'd like to know two things on your bucket list. My dream place, like, to visit is um, Machu Picchu in Peru. That's, like, my dream I've place. I've heard of this place. I want to go so bad. That is my dream. Um... I hope that happens to you. Yeah. I really do. So that's like on I'm my sure bucket list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then another thing, um, I want to start a nonprofit. That's like my dream. Okay. So that's <laughs> I don't know goal. what yet. Like I don't know the logistics yet, yeah. but I just know that I'm going to do it eventually. <laughs> and do you know what? You're so determined and you're so strong and powerful. I'm sure that you will one day. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming and speaking to us today on Thank Behind Closed Doors. It's been amazing meeting you. You are just as lovely as I thought you were going to be. <laughs> um, I've really enjoyed getting to know you and I'm sure our listeners will have too. So thank you to everybody for listening at home. This is PLT Behind Closed Doors. If you do like our episodes, please make sure to subscribe and leave a review and we'll see you again next week. Thank you again, Danielle. Thank you. Danielle, Danny. <laughs> Woo.